taking simple ideas and concepts from the Journey to the West. You know, the Journey to the West is about the Monkey King sent off to India to bring Buddhist scriptures back to China. And that's the story, the legend of how Buddhism came to China. But along his journey, he meets a lot of challenges and fights and all these things that change him along the way. And uh, when he's done with his journey, he becomes a Buddha himself. He becomes an enlightened himself. And what we wanted to take out of that story is that journey of transformation, that journey of change. And we wanted Sonny to be that character to carry that message, which is he starts off as a very bad guy. He's a killer. He's a cold-hearted assassin. And through meeting MK and opening up, he realizes that that's not what he may be about and that he wants to transform and change himself. So we'll hopefully see throughout the series the transformation of this character, Sonny, from being bad to becoming good. How is that experience of having two titles working on this project? Two what? Two titles, like working on uh, exactly this Wearing two hats, yeah. Uh, it's uh, busy. <laughs> Very busy because my day doesn't end at their, at the, the, when their day ends. You know, it's, there's a lot of things to do in the background. There's a lot of things to do. And on top of that, I'm fighting like 12 hours a day uh, on set and also fighting, you know, many hours behind the scenes. So um, it's very consuming, let's just say that. It takes, it takes over every piece of you, every minute of your life. And so, but it's exciting. I mean, if it wasn't a project that I was passionate about, it would seem like a drag. But because it was a project that I really loved and was really passionate about, it was, it was just felt natural. This is what I'm going to do to make this thing work. It's an exciting time for Asian Americans on TV right now, and Daniel and Aramis being Asian American yourselves. Um, what do you think it'll take to see even more Asian Americans in film and TV in the future? I think it's really simple. The shows need to be successful, you know, and it's not really about the subject matter. It's just about whether um, those stories can stick to a larger audience that's just more than just Asian American. If we're talking very specific Asian American stories, that's really only talking to the Asian American audience, not even to the Asian audience, because Asians in Asia don't care about Asian American stories, right? So you have to have a successful show that's not just about that subject matter. And this show, Badlands, is not about that at all. It just happens to be that two characters in it have Asian American heritage, you know, um, and it's a really cool show that kicks a lot of ass. And so, like, if that is successful, then that's where the doors are going to start opening up, I think. And we're going to need we need more of that because you need to have television, American media reflect more upon American society. You know, um, there is a very large Asian American population in this country, and we need to see that more on screen. And we're not seeing that. You know, I grew up in a in the 70s in America where I saw nobody on the screen. Then the 80s, and that was like 16 Candles, a character called Long Duck Dong was a nerd. And like that ruined like the, the image of Asian American males for every Asian American male. It was the bane of our existence. And so to be able to fight that, and even Kung Fu, the TV series, which was meant to be Bruce Lee's show, but it was taken from him and then replaced with a, with a Caucasian man to play an Asian in yellow face, basically. You know, it's been many, many, many years of progress to get to this, to this stage. But it's not something I'm thinking about. I built a career myself in Asia that has nothing to do with race. And this project also has nothing to do with race. It's a martial arts thing that doesn't have to do with race. It's a future where everyone's mixed together. And that's really what America is right now. And that's what it should be. Let's take two more questions. Where did you, sorry. Go for it. Where did you shoot the, the the scenes at, like, what was your primary locations? New Orleans, Louisiana. <coughs> so that was also very challenging because it was summertime when we started filming. And I'm wearing a leather jacket <laughs> and I'm fighting outside. So it's like 90% 90 humidity, 90 something degrees. Um, it's hot, very hot. But I think that environment, you know, a lot of shows that shoot in New Orleans because of the tax credit try to make it look like somewhere else. But we kind of embraced the location because there's so much beautiful stuff there. Um, the, the trees with the Spanish moss and the, the plantations and that architecture and that whole southern vibe I think lends itself to adding a whole another layer to this the visuals of this show and make it kind of really interesting so that it's not in some generic setting. It's a very specific southern uh, dystopian America. So uh, who are your material arts role model? My martial arts role models? Material art role models. Uh, my martial arts role yeah. models are like probably Bruce Lee, of course, uh, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, you know, all of those guys I grew up watching. 
In fact, Jet Li was the reason why I started to learn martial arts as, as a yeah. kid. I saw Shaolin Temple when I was seven years old. And I was like, that's it. I want to learn Kung Fu. Um, and, and, you know, they've been role models our whole life. And then we've been lucky enough to be managed by Jackie Chan, you know, um, in, in Hong Kong. And so that we've had a very close relationship with him for many, many years. So he's a mentor and an idol.